Oh yeah, I think science is very sexy. Um, I mean, there are a lot of big scientific puzzles when it comes to sexual reproduction. You know, why do we choose to have sex? Um, it'd be much easier to just kind of, you know, bud little clone. Boop, you know, it saves lots of time and energy, uh, waste and disease and all these things. Um, but, you know, many, many animals in the animal kingdom actually put in the time and energy and risk the disease and, you know, all the pains and the heartache to actually sexually reproduce. So it's a big puzzle in evolutionary biology. Uh, and then when you start looking at the different ways animals go about sexual reproduction, all the different ways they go about finding mates and you know, strategizing to get mates and convincing individuals to mate with them and so on, uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of just fascinating to see all the strategies that are out there. And, and in many ways, humans are real outliers in this. So it's, it's fun to look at the kinds of techniques that we see across the animal kingdom. Well, humans are a very funny species when it comes to sexual reproduction. We're very weird relative to our closest living uh, primate relatives, the other apes. Um, so we, uh, for the most part, seem to be a pair bonded species. In other words, a male and a female get together and form this pair bond and kind of cooperatively rear their young. Uh, there's nothing really like that in the, the rest of the great ape species. Um, in chimpanzees, our, our, our closest living relative, you see lots of multi-male, multi-female uh, reproductive behavior, meaning you know females are mating with multiple males, males are mating with multiple females. Uh, but also in chimpanzees, you also see that males and females just aren't interested in sex during the period where females aren't very reproductive. So female chimpanzees advertise their receptivity, the period where they're fertile, um, by having this huge sexual swelling that kind of blows up, and males are kind of only interested during this period. Uh, somehow humans, you know, unlike our closest living relatives, have kind of gotten rid of this. You know, human females, of course, don't go around advertising with, you know, really robust, blown up red sexual skins when they're receptive, uh, which is a bit of a puzzle. You know, why did we lose this trait just in the last seven million years? Um, you know, these are the kinds of things that hang on for long periods of time in primate evolution. So the fact that we got rid of this really quickly is a bit of a puzzle. So kind of weird relative to other closely related primates when it comes to sex and our sexual behavior. The, our, our other uh, closest, so we have two closest living primate relatives, it's a tie, uh, between chimpanzees, so common chimpanzees, and their sister species, bonobos. And chimpanzees and bonobos greatly differ uh, in their own sexual behavior. Uh, bonobos are, are sort of the make love, not war kind of primate. Um, they tend to be way less violent and aggressive than chimpanzees. And one of the behaviors that allows them to overcome that is the fact that they're uh, very sexually oriented. So in a lot of the situations that would cause aggression in chimpanzees, bonobos actually resort to having sex uh, to kind of diffuse any of the anxiety or the stress about the situation. Um, so it's a, a, another puzzle for humans is that we have one of, one of our closest living relatives is very aggressive, very warlike, you know, kind of a lot of the stuff that we explicitly say we kind of don't like as much about the human species. Our other closest living relative is very peaceful, you know, very kind of social, sexual oriented, has lots and lots of female bonds. And there's a bit of a puzzle in the field of, you know, what parts of these two guys did the humans get? You know, are we more like chimpanzees or more like bonobos? Uh, still big puzzles in the field of primate cognition. Mm -hmm.